So you've got to turn this around for yourself so you can be, and, and it'd be great for you guys to do it together. If you guys could go do a 5K every Saturday, it would be wonderful for you guys to, <laughs> to learn how great you can eat and, and be healthy while you're doing it. You don't have to be, you don't have to suffer. The director of clinical services at Wellspring, Eliza Kingsford, is joining us today. She says Robert is determined to beat his problems with weight, and she knows because she's been so intimately involved. So, Eliza, how you doing? Good to see you. Thank you. So, how's this guy doing? Uh, he's doing so well. I mean, I get overwhelmed when I look at him. Uh, like you, I don't see the weight loss. Um, it's, a, it's a great byproduct of all the work he's been doing. I see all of the life changes he's making. And now he is in the community playing sports, going to classes, going to group learning nutrition and culinary. I mean, his whole life is different. Thanks for being here, and thanks for all the work that Wellspring is doing for him. All right, well, we're gonna, we're gonna stay in touch with you, and we're gonna continue to celebrate all of your progress. You're making us all very proud. Yeah. Thanks so much, man. All right, next, an update with the world's biggest bride. When I met her last May, she wanted to reach her wedding day weight of 800 pounds, but I had different plans for her. So how is she doing? Well, let's just say I had to get on a plane and fly all the way across the country to confront her once again when we come back. He is telling you while you're here he wants you to gain weight. He's telling me to come home and just go back to gaining weight. So basically what he's telling you is you have to be willing to kill yourself to be with me. Well, I've just flown all the way across the country because I wanted to check in with Suzanne. You'll remember her, the world's biggest bride. She had a goal. She wanted to weigh 800 pounds when she walked down the aisle. I said that was a bad idea. In fact, I said it was a deadly idea. You'll remember her. Take a look. On a given day, I don't really count my calories. I do what's called grazing all day long. What I do is I have my normal big meals with the family, and then while I'm just sitting there at my computer or watching TV, I snack almost constantly. So my goal is at least 1,800 pounds, because then I would break the world record, and that would be awesome. Why do you want to be larger? With me, it's either you, you're all in, or you're all out. But I want to see just how large I can get, because I enjoy the gaining, the way it feels. As I put the weight on, I feel happier. You're actually a model, right? Yes. And you have a website? It's kind of like a pinup type style website. There's nothing X-rated. It's just basically bigger women showing off their body and confidence. According to Parker, who is your fiance, mm -hmm. you sometimes do approximately 30,000 calories a day. <laughs> That's a lot of food. As you've gained weight, what can you do and not do? I have to have somebody take me from our apartment down to the car in my wheelchair. I have to make sure I go to a store that only has, you know, the power scooters. I can go for short walks, but not long walks. Are the people in your life okay with this? They are because they have to be. I feel perfectly comfortable with Suzanne's size. She's healthy, and so long as she's happy in her skin, I'm happy with her as well. I think she's beautiful. This woman is such at a high risk for heart failure, other organ failure, premature death, yes, sir. that she is a ticking time bomb. I think this is protracted suicide, and I think you are an enabler if you are helping her do this. Whether he was helping or not, I would do it. Do you believe that you're putting your life at risk by being at this weight? How do you change something that you feel is you? And I'm telling you that your chance of seeing 50, in my opinion, is almost zero. Your sister here told us that she is OK with weighing what she weighs and getting even bigger as long as she's healthy. As long as she does it safely, I'm happy. How do you do it safely? She's healthier than I am. No, she's not. Actually, no, she's she not. is. Unless you're in stage four cancer, she is not healthier than you are. I've had a history of heart problems. Oh my God, I can't believe what you just said. She now told me you have a family history of heart disease. So everything I just told you, it's worse. Your mother says her goal is to get to 1,600 pounds. Did you know that? And a woman did get to 1,600 pounds, actually. She's the heaviest ever, Carol Yeager. She died at 34. People that weigh more die earlier. 
And how old are you? 34. Have I said anything to change your mind? I mean, I love my sister. She's my best friend. You know, I'm afraid to lose her. <laughs> You're selling yourself short. And I, for one, think you don't have the right to do what you're doing. I will make you an offer. There's a program that you can go into. It is designed to take people that fight morbid obesity and give them the medically supervised return to health. Do this for you. Do it for the people that love them. Okay. Deal? Well, Suzanne finally agreed to go to Wellspring Structure House, but let me tell you, this was a struggle. It took another month to get her going, and the night before she goes, she ate two sandwiches with roast beef, turkey, ham, cheese, onion, mayonnaise. She had chips and soda. So it was kind of like a last-ditch effort. Here's how the journey began. Today is the first day of my journey to losing weight. I'm going to Well Springs to get that started. I feel nervous, scared, anxious, excited, happy. <laughs> it's going to be hard, you know, to be away from my family and friends. When I was on the show, it was a wake up call. It was kind of surreal, but it got me to doing a lot of thinking. Dr. Phil looked at me as an enabler, basically someone who, you know, was like, yeah, go ahead and keep on eating. Suzanne was already this size when I met her, so it's not like she was an 82-pound weakling when I met her and then this happened. He's making me a sandwich, something kind of light, because I'll be flying, so I don't want to have anything heavy. Yes, I know, Dr. Phil, I'm enabling her right now, but it's her last day before she goes away and doesn't get any goodies for a while. I got a nice big pile of chips, and I've got two delicious sandwiches with lots of mayo, two different cheeses, a couple different types of meat. This will be a tiny snack. I'm so glad that you did this. Okay. You call me anytime that you feel that you just can't go another step. And I will push you. Hey, Suzanne. Hi. I'm Tom Britton. I'm the executive director. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Wellspring Structure House. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. So am I. I'm looking forward to the changes. <laughs> well, Suzanne has now spent five months at Structure House, an internationally recognized weight loss center. The experts have really got their work cut out for them with Suzanne. Now, she hasn't always followed the program. She has snuck off campus, gone to a fast food chicken place, and she really needs a reality check. She has no idea that I'm here, and that's for a reason. What we're gonna do today is do a fruit platter and a composed salad. You know how to use a knife and all those things. Cutting away from yourself. Hello. Hi. <laughs> What's up? When Dr. Phil walked in, I was just like, oh my God. I was so shocked. I was a little bit nervous because I haven't done as well as I probably could have. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you? How's this one doing? She's doing good. I came to see you. <laughs> All the way across the country to see you. I've been getting reports, some good, some bad. And uh, so I thought I'd chat with you a little bit about what's going on. All right, shall we go sit down and talk a little bit? Sure. All right, let's do it. Coming up, is Suzanne's fiance sabotaging her? He wants you to gain weight. Come home. I know it will kill you, but it's what I want you to do. And then when you die off, I'll go find me another fat girl. We now return to Dr. Phil and the world's biggest bride update. You came in in June. Mm -hmm. So middle of June, was middle it? Middle of June, about the 18th. So we're here now at the end of October, so four months. Mm -hmm. You currently are down a total of 47, 48 pounds? Yes. You've been down, back up, down, back up, and down. By the time people see this interview, they're gonna have seen a recap, and the recap is gonna have told them that your goal was not to lose weight, but to gain weight. Mm -hmm. But I wanna see just how large I can get and still be healthy and happy because I enjoy the gaining, the way it feels, everything about it. They're going to have heard me say that I thought that was an absolute 
higher form of destructive insanity. And you disagreed, and you had some family members and a fiance who I thought were just enabling you. And you like large women. I'm just not the type of person who likes stick skinny women. I just, I, I never have. I've always liked women with curves. And you know, in fact, she eats healthier than I do. No, she doesn't. I take her grocery shopping, and the cart is loaded full of fruits and vegetables. I don't even eat that much. Oh, my god. You have brainwashed these people. So tell me where all that is at this point. I was struggling with binge eating and with whether I still wanted to continue gaining, whether I still wanted to be a part of that world, because that's how I made my living, and that's what I really enjoyed, or whether I wanted to be healthy and live a long life. And several times I, I was I was in the mind frame where I can do it, I can lose weight, I want to at least lose 100 pounds. And my fiance Parker at first was supportive, but then he started talking about wanting me to gain. He was, in a sense, giving me permission to do what I wanted to do. I can't wait to eat. And then eventually, you know, I would go up and down, and I was I was just feeling hopeless, like I couldn't do it. And then I just came to a point where, after a binge, I was like, I can't do this to myself anymore. And I told him that I wanted to lose weight. I told him that I needed to do this. But then he sent me several text messages telling me how, if I wanted us to have a happy marriage, I need to gain. If I wanted us to be happy, I need to gain. That's what he's attracted to. He is telling you while you're here, he wants you to gain weight. He's telling me to come home and just go back to gaining weight. We'll have a happy marriage, we'll be, we'll be happier. It's what he wants, it's what he thinks I want, it's what I wanted. Every time I would get, you know, I can do this, I can lose the weight, I, you know, I can accomplish this. And you agreed with that to a degree. I did, I've been in, in therapy here, going back and forth with the, you know, I wanna lose weight, no. Trying, trying to let go of the gaining weight and how much I loved it versus being healthy, and that's, that's where I've battled back and forth. But he wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't being constructive to what I need. Did it ever occur to you that he's wanting you to do this for his entertainment, because he has some attraction to this, that he's willing for you to put your life in jeopardy to entertain him? I don't think it was all about his entertainment. I just think that's what he was attracted to. How is that not for his entertainment? He's saying, gain weight, come home, we'll be happy, we'll be married. I know it will kill you, but it's what I want you to do. How is that not for his entertainment at your expense? OK. <laughs> is he saying if you were 120 pounds or 150 pounds or 200 pounds, he would not be attracted to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's saying, if you want he's, me... He's in one sentence saying that, you know, I'm attracted to you as a person, I love you as a person, but if you're not fat, I won't be attracted to you, and we won't have a happy marriage. So basically what he's telling you is, you have to be willing to kill yourself to be with me. And then when you die off, I'll go find me another fat girl. And when she dies off, I'll go find me another fat girl. Because you notice, he's not fat. What do you think about that? It's insane. Yeah. So long as she's happy in her skin, I'm happy with her as well. When was the last time you saw this fiance? 